Before we can set the network video recorder up, we need to find some information about your network. So the two things we need to know are uh, what is the IP address of your router and uh, what available IP addresses are there on the network. So let's do the router first. So using a Windows PC, go to this start button bottom left of the screen and in the search box type the word command. This will bring up the option of command prompt. So select that one and click with the left mouse button and then you've got a black screen here. Type in the word ipconfig, that's I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G, and then hit return. This then gives you all the information you need about your network. The only bit you need to know about this one is default gateway. Make a note of the number that's here. It might be 192.168.11 or something similar, as is 10.0.0.1. Okay, that's the that's the router IP address discovered. And now we need to find out what, what other devices are on the network so we can find a um, suitable IP address for the recorder. So we do that with a little application that's available online, and it's called Advanced IP Scanner. So if you just go to Google and just type in the words Advanced IP Scanner, and then you'll find there it is there. It's the web address is Advanced hyphen ip hyphen scanner dot com it's a nice little app um, little app that's the screen there so hit the download button and let it uh, let it download I always choose the run button but you can save it for later use if you wish it's, it's a useful little application but uh, just hit the run in this uh, this uh, in this video and select an English language and we're going to run the portable version accepting the agreement whatever it says Sure, it's fine. And there's the, the application. Okay, to scan the network, you hit the little green button there with where it says scan and uh, give it a minute or so just to find all the devices on the network. The reason we're doing this is when we set the NVR up, there's two ways to, to uh, set it up, uh, set the cameras up with it. You can manually add them or you can make the recorder set the IP addresses of the camera for you automatically. So if anyone who's, who's not experienced in this sort of thing, it's a really useful little, uh, little tool, that is. The problem with that is what, what happens is the recorder will, um, s whatever IP address you set the recorder to, it will add one, one number and then that will be the first camera. So if the IP address of the recorder is 25, the first camera will be 26. So this is the reason we're doing this quick scan of the network, so we can find out the, the available spaces there are for uh, IP cameras here. OK, we're nearly done. OK, so we can see we've got all these devices on the network, starting at 10.0.0.1, uh, going to 200. OK, now we can, um, we've got plenty of space between 26 and 200 to fit plenty of cameras we've only got eight on the system so that's that's fine so if i could set the nvr to 27 or anything above that it would assign the cameras as 28 29 30 and going on from there so i'm going to assign the nvr as 27 just make a note of that so i don't forget so 27 and uh, 10.0.0.1 is the router address okay so that's it we'll now switch over to the nvr screen to see how to set it up So we've got the NVR plugged into the monitor now and we'll uh, just go through the startup wizard and, um, and then add some cameras. So you, this is the screen you're greeted with when you first boot up the recorder. If you use the mouse, use the right mouse click and then you have this menu here. So right at the bottom we have the start button and then wizard setup. So select that. Here we have the language you want to use. Click OK. The video format. In the UK it's PAL. Other parts of the country you can use NTSC. Uh, this is the monitor setup screen. The ideal resolution for this system would be 1920 by 1080, but you can use lower resolution. And then here we have the IP screen. Now, earlier in the video, we had a look at the uh, available IP address and also the, the IP address of the, of the router, the gateway. So this is where we'd enter that information. So if you remember back from the video, we had an IP address of 10.0.0.27 and that was uh, one above the previous IP address and the gateway was 10.0.0.1 OK, 
Okay, so that's that done, and then on to the next bit. Now let's add some cameras. There's two ways we can do this. We can do it automatically or manual. So let's first of all do it automatically. Okay, this uh, little box has popped up. Do you want to set the IP channel? The IPC's addresses, IP address will change. So now we've set the NVR to 10.0.0.27. It will now change the cameras to one above that. So the first camera will be set to 10.0.0.28 and go up one at a time from that. So if I click OK, that will then now set the IP cameras addresses up. Okay, once that's done, it says it's saved. Click OK and then your camera should appear on the screen. Right, so to add the cameras manually, you right click and go to IP camera setting and manual and you then hit the search button. Once the search is finished, you've got your list of cameras here. You can select which ones you want and the order you want. Or you can just go all and it will add them in that order. And then hit save. And there we go. There's your cameras back online. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the uh, settings for the camera on this software. So we'll just right click and go to setting. And then uh, where it says channel, that's the, the setting for each camera. So we're looking at camera one, which is this, uh, this one at the back of our yard here. So the display settings, we've got the on-screen names uh, on graphics up in the top left-hand corner here. You can name the camera, I see down the bottom left-hand corner here, so we've, we've given it the model number of the camera, that's the VAP dome. Uh, you've got the date and time, top right-hand corner, you can have that. Um, uh, the time format, date format. And obviously you can choose whereabouts you want those to be. You can move those around to suit whatever shot you're getting. Okay, so wherever you like, not a problem. Okay. So now uh, the image setting is brightness and contrast. It seems pretty good as it is, but we can if we want to tweak that brightness up a little bit. Or maybe increase the contrast. Brightness down a bit now, so the sky's gone a bit wider out, or you can just default it. There we go, default seems to work pretty well with this camera. Okay, so any settings you make there, rather than make them on individual each camera by going to the next one, you can simply copy to and then select the cameras you want to set those settings for. Video parameters. Again, you've got the copy to button down the bottom here. I think that applies to pretty much all the screens. Yeah, okay. So video parameters. This is where you select the camera you're gonna modify. Um, so you're selecting mainstream and then these are the settings for it. So you want video or video and audio, depending on what camera you're using. Um, the resolution wants to be 1080p for the best, if that's what it is. Constant bit rate or variable, you can set that as you wish. Default is constant. As uh, uh, This is the, uh, the bit rate. Again, you can tweak that as you want. That's the default setting, 4096. Frame rate is by default 25 frames a second. You can bring that down if you want to uh, save on hard drive space, but 25 is default. Video quality, but again, by default, highest is best and uh, iframe at 25 frames. So again, these are default settings. If you want to save them, copy to, copy to the other cameras and it's done. Now, just one thing to mention, when you're in multi-screen view, you have to set each camera, th these are the sub-streams, these aren't the high definition streams. I don't know if you notice the quality drops a little bit. When you go full screen, it pings out as, as a HD. But when it's multi-screen, it's giving you the sub-stream. Now to to make all eight work, you would need to set the substream of each camera to 640 by 480. So I'll show you how to do that. You just go to the setting and the camera you want again. It's video parameters. 
and then you go to substream here and then you set this one to VGA 640 by 480 VGA Any other setting will uh, will give you freeze frames on the multi-screen view. So VGA 640 on all cameras, 640 by 480, and that will make it all good. <coughs> okay, so we'll save that then, and that's it. That's the camera settings for for this software. Bit of activity out in our yard today. Not normally much going on. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look what else we got there. So that's camera setup. Let's have a look now at record setup. So we'll just go to the settings page again. And we'll go to um, channel. And then schedule record. Okay, so this is the screen where we can um, set up what sort of recordings we want the camera to make. Um, so whether it's going to be a constant recording or a uh, motion trigger recording or an alarm trigger recording. Let's have a look at the, the options. So uh, again, this is the channel one here, channel one, and we can have any one as channel as uh, cameras. Let's do one. Let's turn off all day recording. So at the moment, it's set to schedule, which is permanent recording, and it's set to all day record. So all the hours, so Monday to Friday, uh, not 24 hours, we've got recording. So we'll just turn that off. So now we want to say schedule um, the the recorder to record certain times a day all the time and certain times in motion only so let's say um, we want it to record all day while we're at work and we'll work from 8 a.m until 5 p.m so 8 till 5 we just click and drag draw draw a line five o'clock so monday to friday we want permanent recording there we have permanent recording now we want some motion so when we're when we're at home we only need to record motion so we can just draw a square there and a square there and then weekend well we're there all the time so we don't need to record at all so we can leave that off except sometimes on a Sunday afternoon maybe we go out so let's set it on motion uh, Sunday afternoon for about two o'clock let's record motion until about uh, let's say eight o'clock there we go I think I've drawn too much too much of a box there but that's how you do it anyway. There we go. And you just right click to uh, delete any part of it. There we go. So it's completely programmable how you set the recorder to do its thing. You can, if you want to make life easy for yourself, click this all day recording button and then it will just record all the time permanently. If you want all day motion recording, just go to motion. And there we go. That's permanent motion recording. And it's as simple as that. Once you've done that, copy to it all, and that's it. The recorder is uh, doing exactly as you wish. Okay, now onto motion. Let's uh, set up the motion. So we've got the recorder now recording motion all the time, 24 hours. So how do we set the, motions, the uh, motion settings up? So let's look at camera one then. We'll enable motion detection, and here we have the area settings. Now, by default, it's, it's looking for motion on everywhere, every part of this screen. So let's uh, let's let's try and mask off the left hand side so it will ignore anything on the left hand side of the screen and continue recording from motion triggers on the right hand side. So again, we just draw a little uh, a box. We can start up here, draw a box, and let's draw it to about there. So anything on this uh, left side of this orange truck here will be ignored. And then click OK. So that's the area setting done. We have a sensitivity here which, uh, which determines how soon or how often it triggers from the motion, how much motion is required. That's the default setting, so we'll leave it at that for now. The schedule, we can, arm, we can have it um, armed all the time. And I guess we can delete certain times. Yeah, so same as before, draw the box of the hours you want to arm it for motion detection. Now, linkage, this is where uh, what happens when a, a motion uh, event is triggered. 
So you can make it record on all channels or certain channels only. You can have it give an audible warning so the, the uh, recorder will bleep. You can have it send an email. You can have it say alarm on monitor which is this little bleep thing on the top left hand corner here and upload to center. This is something we haven't looked into yet but it's, we're just waiting for the firmware update to find out what's going on with that but we believe there'll be some sort of FTP uh, setting on here but we're just waiting on that from, uh, from Xvision. Okay and again once you've got those settings you can copy all. Don't recommend you do that with the, uh, the motion settings because each camera will have its own masking points you want to uh, you want to avoid so but it's there if you want to.